remember, um, Richard was um, visited by um, the City of London Police in his university accommodation in Sheffield, who said they wanted to question him about a website that he made. So he went along on his own uh, to be questioned by them. They had two Americans with them. I don't know who they were, but they didn't take part in the questioning. But he told them everything they wanted to know, and they said he was um, beyond bail. They didn't charge him with anything. Said he'd need to go back to their police station in London at the end, near the end of May, the following May, which was like six months later. Um, we never heard from him in between, so we we never knew whether mm. he was going to be charged with any offence. Um, and then when we went, because I went with Richard to the to the bail, they said um, the criminal investigation in the UK has been dropped, which that was an immediate sigh of relief. But however, in the next sentence, they said, but we've now got an extradition warrant for your son to go to America. So you must immediately go to the extradition court. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> That's so... You had, in the six months, there was, in some respects, it gave you the chance to look into this more and research it, but also there's the, the whole being left up in the air for six months. And well, um, we didn't really, I didn't really look into it because um, when Richard was questioned, the next, because I said to him, you know, shut that website down. So he shut it down straight away. So that was the end of it. So there was nothing for me to investigate. We just thought maybe he might get charged with copyright infringement. Nobody mentioned going to America. So we didn't have anything to research at that point. It was when we went back to the, the bail, to answer the bail at the end of May, that extradition was mentioned. And then, from then on, ever since, I have been researching on the internet about the law, extradition, copyright infringement, um, anything I could find that would inform me more about what we were up against. I can't think right now of anything positive from the experience. Um, I can, I've learned a lot about the deficiencies in the law and I've not had very good experiences, as I've observed, going to the courts, etc. And there'll be some issues that I will be taking up further um, when this is all over. Has, has Richard himself just got on with things or has life been a lot, lot more difficult for him as well? Uh, he has tried to carry on as normal. Obviously he's at university and he didn't want his studies to be disrupted. And fortunately the university... Um, have been supportive of him so he is trying to carry on as normal he's got his friends around him and once this was all out in the open um, they don't really mention it an awful lot to him so um, you know he's just getting on with his life he's got his mates they're the best source of support for him and he just doesn't worry about it until we've got a court appearance to worry about. Um, you've got first-hand experience now of the British media have you found that they've been supportive? Or have you found, found it kind of challenging and difficult to, to handle them? Uh, no, I haven't found it uh, difficult to handle the media, other than uh, I don't like being on camera. <laughs> 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 but um, it's kind of a ne been a necessary evil. And I have to say, all of the media have been very supportive. I haven't had any, not one single bad experience of the media, so I thank them for that, because they've really... Um, you know, they've really made us feel supported and, and their reporting has been good and, you know, I thank them for that. Have you um, honestly felt that the, your true friends and, you, and your true family members have stood by you and the ones you didn't expect have backed away? Um, well, it's, it's difficult for people to, to know how to help you, really, because it's not your average thing that's happening to anybody. So... Um, I don't know how you would support somebody in this position. My, you know, my friends and family have been supportive in the way that they can, but I think I have to say probably the most support has come from, um, as well as friends as well, but also from people who I don't even know, people who I've met on the internet, 
um, you know, because I've been researching and I've come across people, you know, so there's a good half a dozen people who I've never even met who have been really helpful and supportive in various ways, people who are knowledgeable about extradition, for example, because your average person in the street doesn't have a clue about extradition. That's something that's for terrorists, you know, to take them back to where they've committed terroristic offences. So Joe Bloggs in the street really doesn't know how to support you. So I think, you know, people have supported me as much as they can because they don't really know how to. Um, you, you just mentioned there that the normal person in the street doesn't know much mm. about this, which mm. is 100% true. Um, do you feel <laughs> that more needs to be done to get the information about this kind of stuff out there? Because it may become a serious issue from here on in with the power and, and the, the access to the internet that is in, in the 21st mm. century. Well, yes, certainly uh, you're right as regards to the internet and and especially, you know, for example, students at university on IT courses. But I mean, even all young people access the internet. Access the internet. A lot of young people make websites and um, various things on the internet, and they need to be aware that that America has. Um, quite a long arm jurisdiction that it, and if it sees fit to try to um, extradite you for something they feel is an offence and actually they have different laws in America anyway so you know um, it may, you may feel it's not an offence in this country something you might be doing but it may be an offence in America so I think certainly there's some education to be done uh, around especially the internet and the implications of of what goes on it because it's not just about copyright infringement there's lots of things get conducted over the internet and you know the what the nature of the internet means that you have links to foreign countries um, and if you have any kind of link with America you could potentially be putting yourself at risk uh, and subject to their laws and it's not a very nice experience to be on the receiving end of an extradition warrant has the whole issue of getting this extradition um, taken away and removed and the law changed, have you made much headroom in getting the message out there? Well, um, currently there has been a review of the UK Extradition um, Act. Um, Parliament is waiting to study that in more detail and to make some decisions about whether they will decide to make some amendments to that law. But um, that's quite a slow process, so I'm not I'm not expecting um, immediate action from the government in respect of this, you know, because things like that do take time. Um, where does it go from here? Um, we're in the middle of November in 2011. From here on in, where is the case going? We have to uh, we have to go back to uh, the extradition hearing um, later on this month, 22nd of November. Um, where the barrister will um, continue his arguments on dual criminality because that is one of the bars to extradition. A crime has to be a crime in both countries in order for extradition to take place. And then there will be the other routine extradition matters to deal with, like human rights, which actually in extradition you don't have any human rights. Um, but this is the kind of process that we have to go through next time. Do you feel that Richard was made an example of because he's a fairly easy target, he's a student, um, he wouldn't have huge backing or finance behind him and do you think that, that in many respects he was hard done by? Um, well I can't see why they would want to actually pick on a student working on a computer in his bedroom when there are bigger fish, fish to fry out there. Um, I'm not trying to condone copyright infringement, but it remains to be seen whether Richard is guilty of that. Um, but as I said, there are bigger fish to fry. Richard's not some sort of Mr. Big. That's true. Um, do you think that th th this time, three to four years, um, the internet and laws will finally have gotten up to speed? Because in many cases, a lot of people don't know where the law stands on the internet. And it's, uh, as you said previously, there have only been two cases regarding this. 
one in Australia and one in the UK. Do you feel that people and the courts need to get into the 21st century and stop wallowing around um, in 100 years ago? Because mm. this is relevant now. Yeah. Well, I think that there are some other cases, but um, I think you're right. Uh, the law and the internet is not that clear at the moment, and I'm aware that uh, lots of countries are looking at their, for example, looking at their laws about the internet, copyright, etc. Um, in America, there's new laws coming, uh, sort of as we speak. Um, but um, I think that the jurisdictional thing needs really looking at because. You know, with all due respect, we can't have America uh, assuming that it owns the internet and that it, you know, that it American laws um, apply to everybody in the world on the internet because that just cannot be right. Um, otherwise, they will be absolutely overloaded with <laughs> law cases in America as if they haven't got enough of their own already. Um, if you have any words of advice or any message that you'd like to give. Um, what would it be? Mm, just to young people, just be careful about your activities on the internet because um, who knows, you know, Richard this year, it could be somebody else soon, it could be anybody. You know, young people um, access the internet all the time, not just young people, but a lot of young people do and, and everybody does in this day, day and age, so people need to be aware of uh, what the potential risks and pitfalls might be and make sure that they're doing um, things that are okay. Having said that, we don't know what the laws of other countries are, do we? Thank you very, very much for sharing the information with us and for putting up such a brave fight so far and hopefully um, justice will be done and you will win because good things come to those who fight for them and deserve them. Thank you very much.